everyone, today's video is on do African pygmy dormice slash micro squirrels is what some people call them, make good pets. And the long story short to that for me is no. So if you're thinking of getting these animals, this video might be interesting for you to listen. And I am someone that loves animals, obviously, because I've got bloody loads. And I enjoy things that a lot of people don't. For example, the hedgehog, I think, is so is so unique and so fun to care for and I really enjoy looking after her but people that have come to see her like my mum she was scared of her she didn't like her she was like oh don't like that it's just like huffy so people like different animals maybe sort of a video where it's like what I wish I knew before getting micro squirrels so why did I get them if I don't particularly like them I was just browsing through pre-loved which is sort of a selling site like craigslist or whatever and I came across these micro squirrels that were that had been up for a while and then they'd been relisted and I was like okay they've been up for like quite a while I want to actually ask a little bit more about them see if there was like in need or if there was like desperate to try and get rid of them or something and I sent a message to um, the person that had them and I said oh um hi like can you send me a picture of your setup and stuff and I'll see if I like want to take them in basically because if they was going to be in like a really big setup and the person wasn't like rushing to try and get rid of them because they were moving house or something. I thought I'd just leave them, but if they need a home, then I'll take them in. They were being kept in a low faunarium that I keep mealworms in and they were an arboreal active animal. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll take them, I'll take them. So that's how I ended up with them. And then I was going to find a breeder to get more for a colony because they do better in groups. I also couldn't really find a good breeder that I really liked but then I found someone on Facebook who had posted in a group and I was like I'm looking for more to add to my colony and stuff and I was like I like your profile I think you'll be good home so I reached out to them and asked them if they would take them and they said yes so now they've gone to a really good home who I'm sure really enjoys them because they wanted some more first and foremost I don't think they make good pets because not a lot of people would be willing to provide what they need and what I mean by that is they're an insectivore. You can't just feed them like a hamster. You need to have containers of live, disgusting bugs, which obviously I don't think bugs are disgusting, but a lot of people think micro squirrels are really cute. However, they don't want live insects in their house or anything like that. You have to feed them live insects because they are primarily an insectivore. So you can't just get them and feed them a hamster diet because that's not fair. It would be like getting a dog and feeding it cereal because it will eat the cereal and it'll probably live off it, but eventually it might get nutritional deficiencies and it's not really a natural diet. It's just not fair to get an animal that you're not going to give the correct diet to. So instantly that's gonna put people off. If you don't want containers of live food, which can get quite expensive as well, then you're not gonna want these micro schools because unfortunately they come as a pair. And then also to go along with that, a lot of people that keep like hamsters and stuff don't, have or are not willing to give additional heating so they'll need a heat lamp or a heat mat or what i'd have is a full-on oil-filled radiator plugged into the wall to make the room warmer and a lot of people that are wanting mice or like wanting like something like hamster but maybe something a bit unusual they don't want to buy a thermostat and then all of the heating and lighting and they can be overwhelmed by it and if you've not researched it and you don't know how to use it all for example, a heat mat might not be sufficient enough. You might have to get something like a ceramic heater meter. And do you know how to do that? Do you know how to set that up? So a lot of people don't really know. And they're just kind of after a more exotic hamster, for example, in which case they'll make a bad pet for you because you'll probably not have that speciality into heating and lighting to know how to do that, unless you really do your research and are willing to buy that, in which case, Fair dues to you, you'll be all right. The next point to make is probably my biggest point and is the one that was a deal breaker for me really, is they are not handleable. You can see pictures of people holding them. I have held them before, but they are not handleable. Now what I mean by that is if they are asleep, I can put my hand in there and pick them up and they'll sit on my hand for a minute and be like, oh, what's going on? And I can take a picture of them in my hand but as they start to wake up, they will start running and they run really fast and they are really small and they will just be gone into the abyss. I did not ever feel comfortable trying to get these animals out to handle at all because they would just get lost in the house. They would just 
be gone under my bed into all of the storage. They can fit through the crack in the door at the bottom. They wouldn't be contained to this room if they got out. And it just wasn't safe to do. Also, on a side fact that they didn't like interaction, they didn't mind it. One of them didn't mind it. The other one would always run away if it knew I was there and it saw me come in. One of them would come to the front of the cage. Now, I only managed this through it being greedy <laughs> and conditioning to see me as food. So it would come to me to get food off me and I could touch its head a little bit and pet it, but it wouldn't ever want to be picked up. And the other one didn't want anything to ever do with me. And also, sometimes, if I, for example, I had to change them into a different enclosure, or if I was cleaning them out, I would move them into just like a holding container whilst I cleaned them. Just because if I've opened this door and took it off, and they wake up and start running around, they're gone again. And several occasions, I'd try to scoop them up with a bit of bedding to like try and not disturb them. They would still wake up and they would bite. They would bite really, really hard. <laughs> and I, they didn't break through skin, but they could have done. They could have broken through skin. Now, some of these individuals may tolerate handling, may. If you get them from a breeder who has handled them a lot from a baby when they're developing and it's like that time where they would tame down like that, and then you really stick at it and you really get them out a lot, you might get one that will come out onto your hand and then go back into the cage and just come out like that. However, they are so fast that even in that instance, it would stress me out to try and get them out of the enclosure. I think I'd be all right with it because obviously if they're friendly and that I'm not actively running away from you and will come back to you, it would be all right. But it's very rare that they're like that. Mine were very normal. They weren't really unsocialized or anything because I'd seen photos of them with the children and the children were holding them when they were babies. Obviously, I think maybe one of the reasons why they didn't want them anymore, they said it was because they was getting a puppy so they didn't have time for them anymore. But I think probably one of the reasons is that they could no longer handle them because they'd grown up a bit, hit maturity and now were just unruly. They just would not be handled and it didn't give them the same enjoyment as they once did. So yes, some of them might come onto your hand. However, it's rare and most of them don't want anything to do with you. And you have the most wonderful, tame little creature in the world that you get from a breeder and then still hand tame them. But when they reach maturity, they just don't want anything to do with you. And I did not enjoy that. I like to interact with my animal. I mean, even to a degree, the tarantulas obviously don't like me or anything. But when it's a mammal, I just would enjoy normal mice better, just like a normal mouse that came onto my hand and I could handle. If you don't mind that they won't come near you and you have to sit in the dark at a really far distance with your glasses on to watch them in the distance, which is what I did sometimes, then they'll be a good pet for you. But if you want something like a mouse, but want something more unusual, it's not the same, it won't work the same way. And yes, you see pictures of people holding them. However, I think a lot of them are sleepy or it's very rare that they're actually really friendly like that. Some people also suggest, you know, put them in a bonding pouch and they'll be all right. I wouldn't have even been able to properly get them in the bonding pouch without them hating life. So I don't think a bonding pouch would have really even helped in my situation. I don't think I could have even got them into the pouch. And if they did eventually settle down into the pouch, I think it would have just been learnt helplessness. They would have just gone in and been forced in and then just gone to sleep because they had to and there was nothing else to do and they were just trapped in there. <laughs> Another negative is because of the handling, they are really hard to health check. So if they have a problem or if you give them medication or you want to make sure they're okay to check, check on them and stuff or check their teeth, I wouldn't have been able to check their teeth. I wouldn't have been able to do any of that. Uh, to like the thought of having to catch this animal to give it medication you know, antibiotics or pain meds or anything if it hurt itself, God forbid. But I would see that as a very big struggle. That would be really difficult to do. My vets did say that they would see them. However, they told me that they wouldn't see the African pygmy hedgehog. And I said, but my species of mouse is not a normal mouse species. And they said that it didn't matter. But I think it does matter. And I think that when I brought it in, they'd be like, what the hell have you brought me? So I had to register it with the one that does the reptiles rather than the normal vets. And it's because this other, the reptile specific one is like a lot longer of a drive compared to like the local ones like literally down the road. 
So I'll just like rang them to see if they had like experience or whatever, because it would be loads easier in an emergency specifically as well. When I said hedgehog, she was like, no, no, we do not see any exotics here, like hedgehogs or reptiles or anything like that. So I was like, okay. But she said she saw African pygmy dormouse. And I was, I don't think, I don't think they would have done. So, but this vet does take normal exotics like rabbits and guinea pigs and stuff like that. And the cat also goes there. So you will need a specialist vet and not all of them take it. And you'll have to find a reptile vet that does like the unusual exotics because I don't think that they actually do see them in normal vets. Even vets that see like rabbits and guinea pigs and hamsters and stuff like that. Another reason is they may breed. So you may have to just find loads of homes for them. And let me tell you, it was very difficult to find a home for these micro squirrels. There isn't really any market for micro squirrels unless people already have micro squirrels. So I thought it was kind of unusual when I saw these up for rehoming in the first instance. I was like, this is like quite a rare mammal. It's like really interesting. However, when I joined the Facebook group because of it, because I wasn't just in it anyway. Sometimes I'm already in these groups just because I'm interested in the animal. I wasn't already in this group. There were so many babies just going to like for homes because this is one of the hardest rodents to sex. So a lot of people were getting sisters, which turned out to be brother and sister, and they had loads of babies now. And a lot of people were just keeping the colonies in like family breeding groups and then just trying to get rid of all of these babies. And they didn't know who was male or didn't know who was female. And it was just madness. It's just madness. I've never quite seen inbreeding like on the micro squirrels page or like accidental litters because obviously people don't generally mean to have accidental litters anyway but with micro squirrels you just kind of accept that maybe they're going to breed together like you get two of them as a baby specifically because when they're an adult it's a little bit easier to tell. I don't know any other mammals where you get siblings and hope for the best and just hope that they don't breed because you can't really tell because you'll most likely get babies if you buy babies um, if you buy more than one and the chances are they might be mixed sex so unless you don't mind just risking it look out for like an adult that's already confirmed but yeah that is another reason why I don't think they make good pets for a lot of people. Another reason is they smell weird. A lot of the animals I don't even notice has a scent. I like the smell of rabbits. You know when you go into pets at home and that smell of specifically pets at home where it's like wood shavings and hay. I love that smell. <laughs> Bloody love it. And the cat as well. Like sometimes we'll be snuggling and I'll be like, oh she smells so cute. She just smells good, you know what I mean? But like obviously with pet care comes smelly things. Like the cat's litter tray. The micro squirrels. I know it's no foul smell to them, but their existing natural state was weird. It was like fruity, but not pleasantly fruity. It was kind of like, well, it wasn't unpleasant either. It was just really strong and specific. And I don't know how to describe it. Kind of like in like a gummy way, like a, a bag of gummy sweets that you like sniff and they smell kind of fruity, but they also smell kind of vin vinegary and kind of just weird. Really can't describe the scent of it they just they just have a smell to it so if you don't mind the smell of weird fruit you'll be all right and finally is the enclosure size for them is smaller than the minimum for normal mice and i don't think it should be this is just like a little side thing because obviously if you give them an enclosure that is bigger than normal mice then perfect because they are smaller than normal mice however they're not that much smaller they still have a long bushy tail which makes them about the same size their skeletal structure really that is like a bit smaller so they can fit through smaller gaps. The thought of 45 by 45 by 60 is the minimum for them. 45 centimeters to explore is not that big. And it doesn't make much sense to me. So the minimum for a pair of mice is um, 80 by 50. And I think that should be for micro squirrels as well. So in the end, I did end up getting them a temporary enclosure, which was 80 by 50. And it was also 80 taller. I wanna say off the top of my head, I'm not 100% on that one. Um, just so that because they're arboreal and can climb and that was the Savic Zeno 1 and then there's a Savic Zeno 2 which is what I would have upgraded into if I'd got more for a colony which is 100 by 50 by 100 or something like that so it's much bigger it was okay for adults to go because it's barred you see 
but if there was babies, they could probably squeeze through the bars. So if you're breeding, or if you have an accidental litter, it's gonna be inappropriate, so you have to go back to that glass one. But I do think a lot of emphasis is put on a smaller glass tank because it's safer, but it's smaller because it's way more expensive. So just a 45 by 45 by 60 was still more expensive than my 80 by 50 by 80. And I just don't think that it's a good idea to put them in a 45. I think they should have normal minimum housing for mice with the caveat that they can fit through bars if they're really quite small. Um, so you need really small bars. That is the cage that I used what I put them in, but it might not be appropriate for yours. So there's a little tip for you there, but don't go for it. Get your squirrels loose and then blame me, <laughs> basically. And if you're listening to that minimum and have them in a 45 by 45, um, I don't. I think that's just normal because that's what everyone advises. But I don't think it's a good thing to be advising or like to follow. I think it should be following advice for normal mice, but needing that height as well because they're arboreal. So that is why I don't think they make good pets. I'm sure there's loads of other reasons why um, they won't make good pets for some people as well. Oh, this could be a benefit, but it could also be a negative. They can live up to six years. I haven't seen one past six. The oldest I've seen someone say in a group that they have is a six year old. So they can live up to six, I believe, but you can never really know if someone's lying or anything. And I never kept them for the whole time. So I don't know if that's exaggerated and it is like a normal mouse lifespan, but um, up to six, and the oldest I found in the group was six. So that is how long their lifespan is, which can be a positive. Sometimes it can also be a negative. For example, if you're looking for a small animal and you know in a few years you might move house or like move on with your life or something. So um, an animal that lives between one to three years is ideal because you're gonna be in the same situation for that amount of time, but you won't be if you have an animal for six years, then it's good that they live a long time, but sometimes it's not good that they live a long time if you want something that is gonna, you know, suit your lifestyle now, but not in the future. So when would they make a good pet? I think they'd make a good pet for you if you don't get stressed by the thought of never seeing your animals, for one, because you might not ever be able to catch them or see them. Um, you don't care that you'll never handle them. Um, you will provide them with insects in their diet or invertebrates in their diet and you will provide them additional heating and you will provide them with an enclosure that is at least 80 by 50 by 60, 60 minimum because 45 by 45 by 60, we'll go with 60. So thanks for watching, please leave a comment down below, let me know if you like micro squirrels or if you don't think they would make a good pet for you either. <laughs> thanks for watching, bye.